examples are many, and these are all uh, programs that have been evaluated and found to be impactful. Uh, we also had failed experiments, and we've been learning constantly from failed experiments. It, it saved the government uh, good money and resources that can be allocated elsewhere. And at the heart of these examples that we've been talking about is data and evidence that has influenced decision making and long run partnerships with governments to impact change at scale. A fourth pathway is the one uh, of taking proven programs to scale, something that has been tested and evaluated in one context and found to be effective. So here we are working with the government of Odisha under the leadership of uh, um, Chief Minister Sri Naveen Patnaik to figure out how a program that was tested in Haryana uh, to increase uh, uh, gender equity can be scaled up across 23,000 state-run schools. Uh, similarly, we are working very closely on the scale-up of a graduation approach, which was tested in Bengal and Bihar and uh, found to be effective and how that can be adapted to the local context in Odisha and scaled up. So my belief always has been that feedback is critical, constant monitoring is important, constant evaluation is important, nothing in government should be sacrosanct forever that you've prepared a project or a scheme which will remain sacrosanct. It should be the monitoring, it should be the evaluation, it should be the data, it should be the evidence which should make you transform things. That is what I have constantly believed in, in every single program. Uh, when I became Secretary DPIIT, whether it was Startup India, we started with just about 150 startups in India. Today, there are 78,000 startups in India. There are 105, 106 unicorns in India. And all this is a consequence of uh, the huge amount of digitization, the huge amount of innovation. It's the huge amount of uh, the, the work which the Jam Trinity in India has done, the huge amount of wealth of data that India has created. It's all a consequence of that. So the entire not-for-profit sector, uh, the spend is less than 1% of the government's annual developmental spend. So all of us, and I say all of us, as in the not-for-profit sector running various organizations, we can all think, hey, we're doing an amazing job trying to do stuff directly. I mean, that'll pale in comparison to what the government does. So if you could, if we could, have a marginal improvement in, and I say marginal, I and mean, hopefully you can have a significant improvement, if you could only marginally improve the quality of policy implementation, that's a huge win. Uh, if you can slightly help policy makers, policy formulators, improve their decision making, because they've got a lot of power and massive budgets, uh, that would be amazing. And therefore, over a period of 10 years, I've gone completely from, if 10 years ago somebody had asked me, uh, there is not a chance I would have said we'd be working with the government. Today when people ask me, our focus is entirely working with uh, organizations that work with the government, either helping policy formulators and or policy implementation, or directly working with the government. So hence the focus. It's only numbers, it's evidence-based, it's data-based, data, data -based, and why we focus on working with improving governance. So my belief is that if India is to transform uh, in a very big way and rapidly grow, you know, if India is to grow at high rates, uh, 9 to 10 percent for three decades or more, uh, year after year, year after year, and use the compounding power of his growth, then literacy, education, uh, health outcomes, and nutrition. Nutrition, uh, all this is very critical. You can't grow. India can grow for a short period, five to six years. But beyond that, if you want to sustain this growth for a three-decade period, then education, health, nutrition really holds the key. Now, my belief is that the capacity at the state level is very, very poor because uh, states are used to physical and financial achievement. What is the output and what is the outcome? Nobody focuses on the outcome aspect of it. Has it really transformed learning outcomes? Has it improved health outcomes? The outcomes are very critical to my mind and that's a function of health capacity. That's a function of your ability to converge women ch and child welfare. The Asha worker, the Anganwadi worker, the school teacher, uh, 
the health worker, all of them must converge at the grassroots to transform themselves. And therefore, data, convergence, and then start comp making them compete and say that I'm putting out this data in public domain. Why will India not transform? Why will India not change with this? Bound to change. But I think, you know, right now we're partnering with over, like I had mentioned, over 20 states and certainly government agencies. Uh, and we, and I think we have been working in this now for the last 15 years in India. Uh, there are a few key lessons, I think, in terms of how we, you know, what we've learned. And the first is it's working at the grassroots level, working with civil society organizations in partnership with governments. Uh, that's the collaboration that you need to bring together to transform uh, change and impact at scale. It's a constant work in progress. Uh, it, and I say this because we, you know, we have to have the system set up with governments to be able to, uh, you know, sort of weather political and bureaucratic changes. Uh, we, you know, there are transfers. A good idea sometimes gets shelved because the bureaucrat has changed. The champions uh, have moved elsewhere. So, you know, setting up those institutional partnerships, setting up long-run partnerships with departments, with uh, central node and agencies, that's really key to being able to sustain. Uh, and, and create that impact or be there for the long uh, haul and be there to build these partnerships. So it's all about, so that's one piece I think that we've learned is actually, you know, and the underlying objective for us has been to use data and evidence to create champions. And we always look for people who are uh, evidence, you know, in, when we're working with Mr. Kant or we're working across many states, I think for us it's really understanding, you know, who are the policy makers who would respond to evidence. Uh, 